This tracking business may seem like an out of character project for me, not something I would typically get involved with, but it all ties together because about this time last year, I started thinking really seriously about something which had been on my mind during all the time that I was doing remodeling projects and that type of work, which is that if you could shift these things into a workshop setting, you could do the work much, much more efficiently. But the reason that you can't do that in some cases aside from obvious things like paint or drywall, which are too big, is that you don't know what exactly what size that needs to be. So we need a way to measure that. Some of the existing industry solutions that are out there are extremely expensive. They're designed for bigger things like industrial sites. I need something smaller. So then I started thinking about lasers, which is still a radio wave. You just crank the frequency way, way up so your, your beam is smaller. And I kind of did some first principles thinking on that, which I'm not claiming at all to be, you know, having come up with an original concept, but if you spin a laser line around and you bing hit it and then bing hit it again, you'll have a ray that goes out to it. So I started collecting parts to that end, buying old hard drive motors, on eBay, I have a whole collection of these, buying some laser line modules. Photo transistors are too slow, so what you want to use is a photo diode, and you load it up with voltage, and then it'll, it'll drop right when it hits it. It has a really fast response and recovery time. I started buying other things, motor controllers for these motors. So I got into that, started trying to do some experimenting with that, and then I came across Valve, or Steam VR or HTC Vive or whatever label it goes under, I find that a little bit confusing. Their tracking system that they came up with, which is called Lighthouse. And what it does is it sweeps a laser line across the room and then it sweeps another one across the room. So why reinvent the wheel? I decided to hold off on this project. Summer was coming anyway, work on some other things and try and use their system to do some tracking. This is our Lighthouse unit right here. And these cans are our rotors and what we have is we have a horizontal rotor this sits on a hard drive motor it's oriented like this and it spins it like so this is our horizontal one and this is the same thing but vertical so it's going to be on the side here not enough room in there and this is all that's inside of this lighthouse unit is a one rotor here one rotor here and then these flash leds You'll see a startup sequence later, and you'll be able to, to see the different ones. But all that these are doing is spinning. And so this is projecting a laser line, a vertical laser line out from the center. And when you rotate it, that laser line goes with it. And then when it registers on the detector, you know, because this is spinning at a constant speed, you get, you got your flash flash, when it was at zero degrees, and then depending on how long it took until it hits the detector, it, uh, that tells you the angle since it's spinning at a constant speed. So this one's spinning like so, the horizontal and the vertical. Since the horizontal one has a vertical beam, sometimes you have to make sure you're thinking carefully when you, you use your words here, uh, but it's, it's really quite simple. That's all that's going on inside of here. I wanted to show the startup sequence, but my main camera has too good of an IR filter, and these are IR beams that come out of here. So I'm using my phone. I'm gonna plug this in from the back, and we're gonna see the sequence. There's an A, B, and a C designation. This one happens to be A. Blue is our spool up indicator. Green means operational. So you can see here, the big global flash ones, the flash flash. And then down here you can see our horizontal rotor and our vertical rotor. And since these rotors only, since you only see them when they're pointed at you, they're gonna follow us as we move left, or well, right, and then left, and then the vertical one will follow us as well. We have two lighthouse units. These, the hardware is identical here. When you sweep a laser line across, if this is our target, and that line hits the target, the only thing that you know from one line hitting it is that it's in 
some sort of plane here. So I'm going to represent that plane as a sheet of paper, which has, has no thickness for our purposes. So this thing, the order that it operates in is that it sweeps horizontal first starting from this side. So it's going to sweep to here, boom, it's going to hit the target, and then we're going to sweep a vertical beam from the center up and it's going to hit the target also. And then if we put these together like this, I'll just move this over for demonstration purposes, it's, it's still in the, the plane that it hit, you'll notice that they intersect and that intersection forms a ray which is basically a vector that goes off into infinity and that points out, it points to the thing which it has hit the detector and then through it out into infinity. So we know that somewhere on this line is our detect is our thing that we're tracking and we combine that with the other unit which is doing the same thing. So we have a ray that comes out of this one that goes like that, a ray that comes out of this one that goes like that, and the point where those rays intersect is where our thing is. When you get into the actual reality of it, of course the rays don't intersect, they just come really close together if you've done it correctly. This also requires that you know where these are relative to one another, which is something that doesn't seem that difficult, but for now we're just going to assume that we know where these are. You also need to know for your thing that is detecting which one of these is which. Obviously that, that matters. These do not have wireless communication with the tracked object. The way that they do it, a bunch of LEDs in the center here, and those flash. So the way that this whole system operates is that each one of these flashes and then it sweeps a beam. And these are, it takes 8.3 milliseconds for it to sweep from zero to pi. And when you put the whole thing together, what you have is flash, flash, sweep horizontal, flash, flash, sweep vertical, flash, flash, horizontal, flash, flash, vertical. So that's a full sequence, and it can do that full sequence 30 times a second. So your full system update rate is 30 hertz. This also accounts for the jerkiness that you saw when I moved the tracked object quickly. And the reason for that is that since it measures one thing and then the other and then the other and then the other and then combines all of that to get the position, if I have moved this like this while it's sweeping, the, the things don't match up. So you'll notice that as soon as I slow down or stop, it'll stabilize quite quite well but when you move and especially rapidly I mean this one says it's here and then the vertical says it's there and this and that's why you get it, it dancing around. What we have here is our detector okay this is the photodiode which is receiving the uh, laser signal now when that laser beam sweeps across an object of course it does not look like this it does not have perfect crisp edges it's kind of feathered out on there and the shape also it's thicker in the center and then it gets narrower out at the edge it may be bent it may be curved those are all things that we'll get into later but for right now the important point is that the energy that hits this thing is actually going to look more like that and when when do you decide that it's on well that's not something that i have to worry about because triad semiconductor put together these pre-made detectors i think it's the ts8633 I'll put in the correct number. And what those do is those change this signal into a nice square wave like that. So I'm going to pull this up on the scope in a minute, and what we're going to see is square waves. They're actually upside down because it's dropping the voltage. And so I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about that. And from our square wave, we're going to use the center of it. And what that does is that helps us deal with situations where the beam is not just going like this, okay, or it's not just going like this, meaning that they're lined up nicely with, with the edges of that. What if it was going like this? Uh, what if this thing is tilted backwards and the beam sweeps across it then? You get all sorts of funky things, and if you try to trigger off this front edge, you're going to get different measure, you're going to get different trigger points relative to the center of your actual sensor, which is your ideal center. So by using the center of this, or uh, of the, the beam, signal when you sweep across it in all sorts of funny ways you get a much more consistent number. 
The way that we turn these actual signals into angles, which I haven't mentioned thus far, is that we use the timing because these rotors are spinning around and they're sweeping the line. Okay, so here we have one segment. There will be four of these for the full update. And what you have here is you have your two sync flashes, flash flash, that I was doing. And then you have your beam hit on the detector. And the distance from the start, which we'll mention in a second, so we'll use this point here. This is our start. This is when the rotor that was spinning was at zero degrees, or zero radians. It's spinning, 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 and then it hits. The thing over here would take the center point, as I said. And this time, right there, relative to 8.3 milliseconds, it's a very, very ugly delta. That over 8.3 milliseconds, 8.3 if it hit it then would be at pi, so then the fraction of that gives you the angle. And these, the lengths of these you'll notice is not the same. And when I said that it uses these flashes to communicate which one is which, I'm referring to this. These come in eight different lengths, okay? And having an eight different lengths with two to the third equals eight gives us three bits of data that we can decode by looking at the lengths of these. And this tells you a couple things. It tells you if it tells you which uh, lighthouse it is. It tells you which direction is sweeping, and it tells you if it's skipping or not. So if it's if it's not turned on for that particular sweep, it also gives you a data bit. And so over time, it is transmitting a series of of data bits that give you other things like the calibration values and an ID, a unique ID for the Lighthouse unit, the hardware, and some other things. We'll look at that in another video. This is also a good time to mention here, once I start showing these, that the information that I got for this, or the, the, the way that I pulled this off, 80% uh, of the code that's running on the Teensy is from Trammell Hudson. I got that from his site, so thank you very much to him. Um, I ended up kind of going through it and rewording it for me so that I could understand it and, and really try to learn what's going on. So if I ever end up posting the code, it looks it's the same thing as his, more or less, but I've kind of rearranged things. And then there's a guy on Reddit and GitHub called Nyrol who has a lot of info about these sort of things also. So thank you to him. I'll put links to both of their things in the description. But that's how I, I got all this. Uh, basic knowledge here. I didn't I didn't work this out from scratch. This is what the pre-built detector module looks like. It's this little thing here. The rest of this is just a breadboard and then another assembly we'll discuss later. I have this set up now on channel one and we can see what look to be some reasonably intelligible signals coming in but they're hard to decipher because they're all square waves so what do I trigger off of? I could try to use some sort of gating setup but what I ended up doing instead was using my very expensive signal generator here to create a 30 hertz square wave since 30 hertz is our update rate. I'm going to plug this into the external and switch that. And now you can see we get a much more stable signal and we can see multiple sequences here. Let's just zoom in on one. So here we have our sync flashes. Flash flash. This is our angle. And then the next one's flash flash. This is going to be 8.3 milliseconds between here and here. You can see that these lengths are changing, as I mentioned, because this is sending data along. The length of this one is not changing. But I'm actually going to pick up that thing and move it around like this. And you're going to see this distance here change. So I'm picking it up. I'm going up. And then back down, so it looks like this one's a vertical, although this one would be a horizontal then, and that's moving too. I'm trying to look at two different things at the same time. But you can see that its relative position changes as we go. I'm about at the same height as that lighthouse, and you can see that the distance here is about the same. It's in the middle. It looks like we have two signals on there, so there's some noise, some sort of reflection is coming in. It's not supposed to be there, but that's that. So I'll give you a zoom in on these changing times here. Speaking of reflections, the signals for this are infrared, but I can actually trigger that thing with this little uh, red laser distance measuring unit. 
And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to just run this over to the detector. We're back on a channel one trigger here and we're using it on, on normal. So I'm going to wave this over and you can see that we have a, a signal there. I'm on a similar time base to, the, to before, but this is a much faster signal. If we zoom in, then you can actually see the, the pulses. And the infrared signal on the lighthouse is modulated at a couple megahertz, but that hasn't prevented it from having all interference issues. You get reflection issues, and since it's the original signal coming back, that can be tricky. I don't know if this directly correlates to the type of reflections you would get with infrared, but it's obviously close enough to trigger it, so it should be reasonably close. And I've found that if you hold this up to a window, for example, particularly double pane ones, then you get two reflections. And I know that when I was trying to use the lighthouse near a sliding glass door, I was getting some really screwy results. And once I pulled a, a blind or a shade over it, it helped an awful lot. So there's a little bit of issue with reflection off of things like glass, um, surfaces like this table that are a bit shiny, and wires and cables like this. I have some suspicions about them having caused me, me issues. Uh, that's something I'll get into in another video. And that's really all there is to it for this system. It's very simple. You have your rotor that spins at zero degrees. It says flash, flash, and then you start timing on your detector. And when it gets hit by the thing, you know how fast it's spinning. You know how long it took. You get your angle. So I'll put in here a, uh, an overlay of some of the angles streaming in. There's four for each sensor because there's two rotors on each of the two lighthouses. And then I have four sensors on the uh, main board that I was tracking. So I have 16 signals and they're all streaming down or up. It's kind of like the matrix, the numbers going everywhere. That's all I see is I just see angles. But it's it's quite simple. So why did I put so much time into this project? It's because of that thing that we glossed over at the beginning, which is where are they relative to one another? You need to know exactly where they are relative to one another. And there are some obvious strategies like triangulating off of a known grid, you say, well, okay, fine, we'll just measure uh, the distance between the sensors. And then we can triangulate off of those to figure out where our things are. Well, those are maybe, what? I mind the one of them is 40 millimeters apart. Are you really gonna extrapolate based on these angles, which have some noise, the, dis the difference between here and here 40 millimeters out a couple meters, what kind of accuracy do you think you're gonna have? In my experience, it was very poor. So you need a better strategy. And figuring that out and all of the troubleshooting that went into that was a much bigger challenge than all of this basic figuring out. And there were some other issues that I ran into as well. So I'm gonna have those in a couple other videos. I hope this is interesting. If it is, uh, you know, please, please let me know. So thank you for watching. See you next time.